Hello everyone and welcome to Chinese with Pei. In today's video we're going to go over two of the last three sounds of the Mandarin Chinese system. And the last sound is going to have its own video mostly because it's the, probably the hardest sound in Mandarin for English speakers to make. So I'm going to give it its own video where we'll cover that. In this video we're going to cover E and U and some special rules that surround those two sounds. So we'll start with E. So E is by far the easiest to write in the dream because it's simply a horizontal line. So it's E. Now it's written one of three ways in Pinyin, depending on its relationship to the other sounds in the syllable. So you have Y followed by the rest of it. You have Y, I, if it's by itself or attached to certain sounds, or simply the letter I, either surrounded by sounds or at the end of a sound. And it's E, E. Um, the easiest example of this sound is the word E, which is the number one, E. So the special rules for E, um, so these are going to kind of mostly apply to the pinyin, but in the juin, so the first one is with the sound yo, yo, which I, if you remember from a previous video, that was uh, an, the example I gave of this sound, o, o, yo, yo. So this, when it's by itself, in the word yo to have, it's written y o u. So it's not you, it's yo, yo. Now, however, when it's preceded by another sound, like in the word jo, jo, which means alcohol, it's j i u. So it drops that O entirely, and it becomes Jo, Jo. And that happens with several words. So if it's if it's consonant I U, and that's it, then it's it's definitely a yo. So the next one affects both pinyin and juin. It's this one, E an or Y A N. A lot of people when they're first learning Chinese, they're really tempted when they see this to pronounce it Yan, which is incorrect. It's pronounced Yen. It's just kind of one of the quirks of both these systems. It's one of those weird rules. You just kind of gotta accept it and move on and don't worry about it because it's not gonna change anytime soon. So it's Yen, as in the word Yen Se. Yen Se means color. So yen se. Yen. And that can also appear with others um, like uh, in the word bian cheng. Bian cheng to transform or to become. Bian cheng. Where it's b-i-a-n. Bian. Yen. So that yen in there. Okay, so the next two um, rules which there's kind of, I don't, well, I'm going to quick point first. So we had yen, like I just said. Yen. But there's also this one. Yang. Yang. So it's yen, Y-A-N, yen, and Y-A-N-G, yang, yang. And you just got to kind of remember that. It's just a rule that you just kind of got to remember. That Y-A-N-G is yang, and Y-A-N is yen. All right, so the, the next two rules we're kind of do together, and it's because it's Y, it's E, un, Y, I, N, or 
in y i in g in in as in in yang and ing um, now again these can occur in with other sounds preceding them for example ing beijing beijing ji ji yi ung jing beijing in that case you just drop the y and replace it with the consonant the j and the same thing works with in So the next one we're going to go over in this video is U, U. So in the Julian, U is written X. It's written like an X, basically. Over, no. So it's not actually an X, but it looks like one. So U. And again, written one of three ways. If it's at the beginning, it's just a W. If it stands by itself, it's W, U. So whenever you see W, U, you now know it's just U. It's not Wu, it's just U. Um... I actually did meet, I actually know someone who, his last name is actually Wu, but it's the Cantonese pronunciation of a totally different character. Um, it was just, it was very interesting to find out about that, but yeah, so, Wu in Mandarin, Wu. And otherwise, it's the letter U, surrounded. And except for in the case of, if it's an I in front, then it's Yo. But any other sound, it's Wu. <laughs> uh, U is a common surname. Uh, it's written like that. U. Right. So some of the rules that go along with U <coughs> are way U A way which by, by itself, wei, as in the example I gave in a previous video of wei, where it means for, to do something for something, wei. <coughs> but if it's preceded by a sound, for example, the word jui, jui, in the pinyin it's written z, h, u, i. Jui means sparrow. Jui. And as you can see, it drops the E and the W turns into a U. No E, and the W becomes a U. Jui. So when you see that, you'll know it's Jui. Jui. Okay. The next rule, when it stands alone, again, it is one, as in Zhong Wan, Zhong Wan, the Chinese language, Zhong Wan, one. Now this one, however, it's again, it's it does something kind of interesting when it interacts with other sounds. So the word Hun Duan, Hun Duan, it's the Mandarin word for a wonton, Hun Duan. Notice I don't say huan duan, it's huan, huan. It kind of, it, it shortens, it drops and shortens that E from one to huan. Huan duan, huan duan. All right, so, and then the last one we're going to go over is wu ung. When it's by itself is Wong. So it's a surname, Wong. Um, I know some Wongs, they're very nice people. And but when it's preceded by another sound, it becomes Ong. Or rather preceded by most sounds other than J, uh, Q, and X. And we'll talk about those in the next video because they apply to the next sound, the final sound we're going to go over. But uh, an interesting phenomenon that kind of goes along with this, so Wong, those Wongs that I mentioned that I know, um, the part of China they live in, the accent turns that into an 
Ong. So they call themselves Ong. That's their family name to them, is Ong. If they went to, into northern China, um, it would become Wang. And if they went far enough north, a really interesting thing happens where any U that's preceded by either an U, an E, or an A becomes a V. So the way becomes V, one becomes Vun, and Wong becomes Vong. It's just kind of one of those things you got to be aware of, and so that when you do encounter it, it's not going to be that big of a shock to you. So today we went over E and U, and a few rules with that. So you might need to review this video a few times, um, but I hope it was helpful, and if it was, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Chinese with Pei.